Hi everyone, um, my name is Mike and this is Ruan and we are elders within Josh Gen. We are elders that lead congregations and it's a privilege to be with you today just to talk about fasting. And we want to answer some specific questions that address fasting and hopefully to clear up some misconceptions about fasting and to really prepare us for the global fast, the day of corporate fasting that Andrew has called. And so we're going to answer some questions and let's dive in together. Welcome. Great to so, be here. So, Ruan, I want to ask you the first question, you know, on what is fasting? What is biblical fasting? Because, you know, we find that fasting is something that's trending today. I mean, if you just get on the app store on your phone, you find that intermittent fasting yeah. as a um, as a kind of a health choice, yeah, <laughs> as a health choice is very popular. The idea that we fast for personal gain, and fast for health and emotional reasons, physical reasons. But, but how different is biblical fasting and why, why should we fast? No, Mike, I think uh, if we look at the Bible and we read all the various books, you see that fasting has always been part of God's people. Um, some of those mentioned in Hebrews 11, if you go read in the Old Testament, Moses, Elijah, Joshua, David, um, later on Jesus, the disciples, Everyone fasted at some stage in their lives. And uh, what we can build out of the scripture is to see that fasting is a very practical way of not eating food, yeah. sometimes not drinking for a period of time, in order to seek God and to pray and to ask Him for His will to be done. And that thing goes directly against the culture around us of seeking your own. It is denying ourselves for the sake of God. Very good. It's interesting that you find in the Bible that God ordains both feasting and fasting. Yeah. And there's an appropriate time for both, isn't there? Yeah. Um, I was reminded while you, you're speaking of the story in Matthew 4, where Jesus goes and fasts in the wilderness and how he quotes Deuteronomy to the devil. And he says, but man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And this idea of fasting as a declaration that my greatest need beyond my most basic need, which is food, is God himself, that I need God. And it brings, fasting doesn't, it brings God into focus, saying yeah. that, that, that beyond my greatest need is the Lord himself. Yeah, I think it, it orders our lives rightly. And so we need food, but we need God more and his word more. And, uh, and that kind of just helps us order it right. Very good. So this leads us to the second question, which is the fact that, as we mentioned earlier, we're calling corporate fast and uh, as churches, we're gathering together. So it's not just as individuals, but, you know, it's a whole group of people fasting together. But where in the Bible does it speak about or describe corporate fasting? And for what reasons did the people of God fast together? Yeah, there are quite a few um, uh, occasions, but uh, three of the occasions that I think of now is in Ezra 8. Uh, Ezra was uh, used by God to, to go back to Jerusalem and kind of rebuild the people. And I think uh, a lot of what is in our heart to see a uh, church live as God wants it to live. And, and so Ezra went back with a number of people. And on their journey back, they called a fast. He called a fast and said, let's fast and pray and ask God for protection for ourselves, our families, and our property, actually. Mm -hmm. And the scripture there says that God heard them and granted them protection. Uh, the second one is King Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. And the Moabites and the Ammonites and a bunch of ites came <laughs> against them. And they were overwhelmed by the number of people that came against them. And uh, King Jehoshaphat calls a fast again. And again, you see that the family is included. Everyone comes together. Mm. They don't eat for a day and they call on God. And uh, the Lord speaks to them and says that the battle is not yours, but the victory is. And they actually, the whole story, you see that they just went to stand and the Lord overcame the enemy on their behalf. And yeah. again, there's protection. And then thirdly, we have the early church leaders uh, in Acts 13. They fasting and praying, just ministering to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit speaks and says, set apart for me, Paul and Barnabas, for what I've called them for. And so you see here, it's protection, it's building of the people, and it's a commissioning um, as well that takes place. Yeah. One of the objections that often gets asked and, um, in the, and it comes up in the minds of people is why should we fast? Because, you know, why can't we just pray? Why can't we have a day of prayer? Why the need to fast? Is there some kind of special power 
in fasting? Is God more impressed when we fast? How would you answer that question for us? Yeah, Mike, I think uh, we all ask that question. I, I definitely love food and I uh, <laughs> would love to just be able to pray. But as I've read the scriptures, I see that this is one of the ways how God has designed mm. us to pray unto him. Mm. Um, if those have gone before us, they've all done it. I think like we'll always say, if we want what they had, we've got to know what they knew and do what they did. Yeah. Uh, and so that's one of the ways how we see God. And, and, and we see that fasting is not so much for God as it is for us. Yeah, very we good. get realigned, we get repositioned. Um, just on a personal level, I've seen how I sometimes comfort eat. Uh, I, I seek for things, um, comfort and so they're in food rather than in God at times. And, uh, and so we're gonna come together in this way to really as one find God's will. Yeah. And don't you find as well that even as you said, you know, fasting is not for God, it's for us as we realign ourselves that fasting is not some kind of spiritual hunger strike where I'm trying to manipulate God to give me what I've asked for and for him to say, just stop fasting and, and start eating again so that yeah. you can, you know, don't destroy yourself. God, God's not, you know, he's not more concerned if we fast or not, but definitely fasting is an opportunity to grow in faith and to take away the clutter and to focus on him, isn't it? I mean, the, the fact even practically that instead of eating over your lunchtime, you can pray during that yeah. time and, and simply have time to pray is such a key when it comes to practically fasting, isn't it? I found that I become way more sensitive in the spirit um, as I fast and pray. And it's like well, you're feeding the spirit instead of the flesh. Um, and there's outpouring of, uh, uh, of his spirit that comes through that. And that's what we're trusting God for together. Yeah, wonderful. So I would encourage you to also download a resource that we have on the 412 website called Fasting 101, where we give scriptures and we unpack a little bit more about the basics of fasting and what it includes and what it doesn't include and some kind of some tips um, for you for that and um, as we prepare for the, the the time together and as we close you know um, Andrew has called this fast and so we're going to get right behind him in the Lord we believe that we want to uh, that God wants to pour out his spirit during this time over us as we're coming into a challenging year we're going to pray for boldness we're going to pray for the empowering of the spirit and the outpouring of the spirit in our churches in our homes in our leadership teams so I'd like to ask you Rowan just to close in prayer for us um, yeah, I just pray that the Lord would, would give us the, the grace we need to do this well. Lovely, I'll do that. Father, we uh, just for a moment imagine thousands of people coming together in unity to seek you, Lord, through fasting and prayer. And uh, Lord, we want to call on you. Uh, let your spirit work in our midst, Lord. Um, Father, I pray for a sense of humility. Pray, Lord, for just a great working in our hearts, repentance, forgiveness, Lord, just realignment with you. And Lord, we ask for a great outpouring outside of us then too, Lord, in our churches, in, uh, in our communities, Lord, that people will find you, that people will see you, Lord, and that there would be some witness through the church, through this movement of churches, Lord, that say that the Lord is with you. And uh, God, we know we can't do that. We need you to do that. So we ask you, God, by your spirit, come do a mighty work in and amongst us yes, in Jesus' Lord. name. Yes, Amen. 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 Amen.